Back in March of 2023, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, said, in the future, every single pixel in a game will be generated, not rendered. Well, it's a bit over a year since he said that, and apparently the future is now. This, of course, is Doom, the original one released back in 1993. Except it's also not Doom, but rather an AI-generated version of Doom that someone is playing. And that's a bigger breakthrough than you might be thinking. So today we're going to dig into well, a little bit of the history of Doom, but mainly focus on Game Engine, the remarkable research that a team of Google researchers has put together. I'll explain why this is a big deal and obviously what its limitations are. And maybe biggest of all, I will also answer the underlying question, why Doom? Okay, let's go take a look under the hood. Speed running through some quick technical information and the history of Doom, Doom was released on December 10th, 1993 on DOS. It was id Software's follow-up to Wolfenstein 3D and had a new game engine developed by John Carmack. Doom was largely written in the C programming language on Next computers, which at the time were powerhouse machines. They shipped with 8 megabytes of RAM and were upgradable up to 64 megabytes of RAM. The game's levels and graphics data were stored on WAD files, which I just learned stands for where's all the data. As a total side note, that era's computer lingo, it's, it's the best. WAD files are still in use to this day, namely by the Doom modding community. Uh, the One of the more popular ones being myhouse.wad, which is kind of a Doom tribute to one of my favorite novels, House of Leaves. My house resides in that weird corner between like game and uh, like experimental art piece. Uh, I'll have a link to a walkthrough of it that explains it a little bit better down below. Still, when you look at Doom today, it may be hard to imagine like how mind blowing it was when it first released. While there were a number of other graphically impressive games at the time, such as Myst or LucasArts Sam and Max hit the road, most games were largely side scrollers, fighters or point and click adventures. And while it is true that there were a number of other 3D shooters out at the time, uh, Bethesda's Terminator Rampage being one of them, those were all mainly built off of the same basic engine that Wolfenstein was built on. Carmack's new Doom engine, which was referred to as ID Tech 1, allowed for texture map 3D environments, variable floor and ceiling heights, and lighting effects. And while not fully 3D, it was actually referred to as 2.5D, the engine was able to simulate 3D space very effectively. If you're hungry for more Doom information, I highly recommend checking out the No Clip documentary on the 2016 remake. There's a ton of interesting interviews and history there. Uh, it is also linked down below. In the meantime, let's use a cheat code to jump ahead about 30 some odd years to check out Game Engine, which actually proves that developers have still not lost a beat when it comes to clever naming. So this is the first game engine powered by a neural model. And this isn't like just pre-trained AI video of Doom. For example, if I go to an AI video generator and I prompt for something like uh, a video of the 1993 version of Doom, I'll get something that looks like this, which you know clearly is not Doom as well. It does look like a game, but you can't play it. And that's where Game Engine differs because with this version of Doom, yeah, you can play it. Game Engine was developed by a team of Google researchers. And yes, feel free to make all the jokes about it never being released because it's Google. That's okay. What we're looking at is the underlying tech here. This is, after all, a research project. Now, granted, this is running at 20 FPS, so it is a little bit of a far cry from, you know, modern gaming specs. But what's super impressive is the fact that it is generating each one of those 20 frames as you would if you were to prompt in, say, Mid Journey or Dolly 3, like 20 of those images a second. And just to kind of give you an idea of how fast that is, uh, just heading over to Mid Journey and using the prompt screenshot from the 1993 game Doom uh, and firing that off, we're using the turbo mode here, so it should be pretty much the fastest. A um, little bit of a, yeah, there it goes, okay. 3163, 94, 100. So yes, pretty fast, but not 20 frames a second fast. That said, if this were just images of Doom running at 20 frames a second, I mean, really all we would be looking at is a Doom movie. Granted, a Doom movie that is probably better than that one that starred The Rock. And that is where the game and game engine comes into play. Game Engine is a neural model that is the combination of two parts, an RL agent and a diffusion model. In very simplified terms, this is like having an LLM like ChatGPT that is constantly talking to an image generator like DALI. 
The first step the team took was to train up an RL agent or a reinforced learning agent, which actually kind of sounds like a cool name for a game. The RL agent then had to play Doom like a whole bunch of times to learn all of the rules of the game world. We have, of course, seen this before with AI agents learning obviously everything from chess to Super Mario Brothers, so this isn't anything new. For the visual and graphics element, the team trained up a Stable Diffusion 1.4 model on Doom. And while I'm not going to get lost in a bunch of the technical details, they did have to do some additional work uh, as the initial output looked a little bit like this, where things look, you know, kind of okayish for a minute. But, you know, on closer inspection, obviously, you know, Stable Diffusion does not handle numbers or letters very well. And, you know, our Doom guy down here is obviously super smudged up. But through some additional training, the team really was able to get it, you know, to the point where it looked correct. So at this point, we have a passive version of Doom. We have an AI agent that understands what Doom is, how to play it, what it looks like, and it can generate images to match that. So basically, we can watch an AI agent playing a version of Doom that it itself is generating. But, you know, we are still sitting there holding the player two controller. In order to make this into a game, the team then had to turn this all into a world model. A world model is an AI environment in which an agent has total understanding of that environment and can thus predict future events. World models have been a pretty big deal in AI video. It's the thing that OpenAI was flexing with Sora when it dropped that on everyone and why Sora looked you know, so far ahead of all of the other AI video generators at the time. If you wanna dig more into world models, uh, Runway ML actually have a really great explainer video on how it works, all sort of through the eyes of a dog. It's a really great video, also linked down below. In Doom terms, the world model for Game Engine essentially kind of knows if there's an enemy standing there and the player is headed towards it, there's probably a pretty good chance that the player is going to shoot the enemy. So, you know, have the animation of the gun firing at the ready. Likewise, if a player is headed for a door, you know, be ready with images of what is behind that door. This is unlike procedural generation where game content is algorithmically developed and placed during gameplay. For a good example of procedural generation, this is from the game Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, this is just the straight environment. And then when you turn uh, procedural generation on, you can see obviously it fills out with all of the trees and shrubbery and whatnot. That said, that is not what Game Engine is doing here, but rather it is you know frame by frame visual representations fully baked in of the game state in real time. And the crazy part is the game world isn't being randomly created, but rather adapts and changes to player interaction based on the existing game state. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Just ponder that for a minute. Anyone that's using LLM like ChatGPT knows the, you know, the longer you use it, the more it will break down and kind of begin to hallucinate. And that's just for text. And I mean, obviously the same is true for Game Engine. There is a limited amount of context that Game Engine is able to store. It's, it's actually only about three seconds or about 64 frames. It does prioritize, I guess, kind of like taking snapshots of your health, ammo, and weapons so that it, it kind of stays consistent and knows that way you're not, you know, essentially playing the game on God mode. Although apparently the model, for some reason, will often remember things like rooms that you have traveled into and enemies that you have already defeated. Um, yeah, it's pretty fascinating considering that that is long outside the context window. Again, to note, the team do say that, you know, you will get a lot of degradation the longer that you play. Uh, and interestingly, it's more prone to errors when a human plays the game as opposed to the AI agent. That's mostly because the AI agent tends not to explore and interact with the environment quite as much as human players do. I guess that's the thing. We humans like to walk around and push buttons randomly. I mean, that's I get it. That's what we do. All that said, you are probably not going to be running AI Doom on your home machine anytime soon. Uh, this is a research project. The team was actually running this on a single TPU or tensor processing unit that is not, you know, consumer grade hardware. So ultimately, does you know AI Doom change gaming forever? Well, yes and no. No, in that most you know AAA, AA, and even single A games will continue to be developed in the traditional pipeline. Although AI assets are you know obviously be becoming more integrated in with that workflow. But for the most part, the traditional game engine pipeline uh, will continue to produce games that way. 
But Game Engine does serve as proof of concept that a, you know, a new branch of game development may emerge and one that might be a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Uh, now, granted, that said, in its current state, it does have a way to go. I mean, at best, we're looking at, you know, maybe generating up a new dungeon in Skyrim, not generating up a whole new world in Skyrim. Uh, speaking of which, isn't it time for another Skyrim release? But considering back in March, we saw Google Genie, which was an AI generated game engine, but that could only do side scrollers and was limited to one frame a second. So we have definitely come a very long way in a very short amount of time. And ultimately, as to the question of why Doom of all games, well, I'll let the game engine team answer that. When Doom was released in 1993, it revolutionized the gaming industry. Introducing groundbreaking 3D graphics technology, it became a cornerstone of the first-person shooter genre, influencing countless other games. Doom was studied by numerous research works. It provides an open-source implementation and a native resolution that is low enough for small-sized models to simulate while being complex enough to be a challenging test case. Finally, the authors have spent countless use hours with the game. It was a trivial choice to use in this work. So yeah, they are fans of the original Doom. And if you're watching up until this point, I presume that you are too, as am I. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.